later today. Now, let's return to the story that's dominated the headlines this week, Harry and Meghan's bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey that's having an impact right around the world, not least in Commonwealth countries. It's important to remember that Queen Elizabeth is not just the Queen of England, she's also the head of state in 15 Commonwealth realms around the world where this interview has been watched closely, dissected and scrutinised like everywhere else. Well, let's uh, talk to Patricia Treble, who's the Royal Correspondent for the Canadian news magazine Maclean's, and Guy Hewitt, for former High Commissioner of Barbados uh, to the UK. Thank you, both of you, for joining us here on the programme. I'll ask the same question to you both, and that is a simple question. Both where you are, uh, how has this interview gone down generally? And, Patricia, why don't you start? Well, I think it was a bombshell. I mean, we saw it live as the Americans did. Um, and the reaction was a, an outpouring of sympathy for both Meghan and Harry. Um, and now, you know, that we're several days out of it, now the question has become, what do we do about the Queen, the Queen of Canada? Um, you know, we're one of the 16. And that discussion is starting to ramp up. I mean, because we've also had our own scandal. Our, our Governor General, Julie Payette, a few weeks ago, was forced to resign after a report came out that she had created a culture of bullying and harassment um, within the Governor General's residence. Uh, so we've got a few problems with the Crown here. I'll come back to those and, and how they view the monarchy in a moment or two, but uh, let me bring Guy in and ask uh, the same uh, uh, straightforward first question to you in terms of how the interview itself was received. For, for Barbados and for, I would say, those countries in the Commonwealth where the majority of the population are black or people of color, it was received with some dismay that racism could still exist within the royal family. We know that racism was a feature of empire, but honestly, there was a hope that the royal family, the monarchy, would be beyond this, especially in the modern Commonwealth, which values egalitarianism and the respect of all persons. And Guy, that issue of race and, of course, that comment about uh, the possible colour of Archie's skin, uh, that whole area in the interview that uh, was discussed, how, how damaging is that being viewed there in Barbados? It's very damaging. As I said, as you are aware, Barbados recently signalled its intention to move away from the Queen or the monarchy as head of state and become a republic. And in part, it's recognizing that the historical legacy of empire still impacts on us and other countries today. We recognize it's irreconcilable with a country trying to move forward, especially if Barbados is asking for reparations from the UK for historic injustices. We can't have a symbol of our country and of our nation, someone who is foreign and someone whose interests are not with the people of Barbados. I'll come back to the ramifications of some of those issues in a moment, but Patricia, in terms of what you ended your first answer on, in terms of the debate perhaps that uh, obviously at a time like this becomes uh, more focused upon, uh, having the Queen as head of state, uh, in terms of current polling in, in Canada, where are people generally? Well, there was a poll that was released just before the interview, um, and, but after the Julie Payette scandal. And uh, the polling was down. It was down significantly. It had fallen um, by almost like 20% from the previous year about keeping the Queen as Queen of Canada, keeping the royal family as, as the centre of our constitution. Um, and a lot of those polls, though, I mean, what Crown experts always say is, is treat them with a grain of salt because, of course, unless we're really focused on them, it's like political polls two years out from an election. Um, you know, you really have to, to get into the nitty gritty of the subject. Um, but certainly there's been damage done. There's no question. We're a very multicultural society. So the fact that there were all these, you know, these talk of, of racism, of accusations of racism against the royal family, of, of the royal family being basically cruel to, to Megan during her time there has, uh, has really damaged um, the, the standing of the royal family. 
And of course, we had that uh, statement from the palace uh, taking those issues seriously. We had that only, uh, what, uh, about uh, 24 hours ago. Uh, Guy, a couple of quick questions in terms of Barbados, because uh, you're on the brink of becoming a, a republic. You had said uh, in the past that uh, you thought there'd be a sort of natural flow of things, that perhaps you'd get to that point when Charles became king. But you think that, that Windrush simply accelerated the pace of all of that, don't you? Very much so. I think the, the notion of Britain respecting rules of fair play were abandoned during the rush. We recognize the racism that was there in the government's policy historically, still operates in the 21st century. And, and the abominable treatment of Barbadians, other West Indians, who really came and built modern global Britain was abhorrent. And it really underscored that the, the symbol of the bridge between Barbados and the UK was unable to speak out on this issue. And people have suggested that the Queen stays out of politics. But we know during the Scottish referendum, she did get involved as the Queen of Scots. And as the Queen of Barbados, she could have advised Britain that was becoming chair and office of the Commonwealth to treat people of color, black West Indians who were really British citizens with the consideration and with the legal protection that they, they uh, demand. They, Guy, they a demand. really brief thought, Guy, if you, if you could. Uh, yeah. Do you think others uh, in the region uh, uh, may also be making the same considerations? Do you think that is a possibility? I would say after this interview with Harry and Meghan, it's going to exacerbate it. People are realizing that the notion of royalty is no longer a standard of anything above the rest of the world. We have had allegations in the past of adultery, allegations of pedophilia. We have serious allegations and it's yep. exposing them to what they are. Patricia, a, a really brief final thought from you as well, because it, it's interesting. Uh, perhaps it may be that uh, you only miss something once it's gone, as all these uh, uh, debates about uh, severing ties uh, uh, gather pace or, or are talked about. Uh, but I suppose one guarantee is, and you see it there in Canada, just an obsession with the British royal family still and the Sussexes, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of interest, but that, I think, should be separated, especially in Canada, from the discussion about the Crown, because uh, the Crown in Canada is very separate from the family. Um, and any talk about changing the Crown, getting rid of the, the Queen, means basically you have political will, you need that, I don't think it's there. Um, how you do it, which is basically you either rip apart the entire Constitution, which is, for Canada, who's gone through generations of strife, not so good. Yep. Um, but you also need, what are you going to replace it with? And nobody has even started those discussions. But if things keep going, you know, then you get the political will, then you get the societal will, and that's when things can move very, very quickly. Patricia, I have to end it there, but uh, thanks so much for joining us on the programme. And Guy, uh, Ambassador there, thank you very much as well to you for joining us uh, live there thank from you. Florida.